As we continue in this section in dealing with fractions, we're going to continue with these multiplying problems. So remember how we said these numbers need to be in complete fraction form. So this one is completely just a fraction, just an improper fraction, no problem. This one is not, so I need to do the improper piece that we talked about before. First of all, 6 will be the bottom number, and then I'm going to do my multiplying and adding here. So on this one, 6 times 5 is 30, plus 5 is 35. So now if I look at it, this is completely a fraction, and so is this one. Now my big concern is, let's reduce diagonally if we can. Now 6 and 1, nothing in common that I can do with those two. But if I look here, they both have a 5 that would go evenly into them. 5 goes into itself once and into here 7 times. Now I'm down to the fact that I can just multiply across. So 7 times 1 is 7. 6 times 1 is 6. Now the only thing that I would have to worry about with this one is actually changing this into a mixed number. So 6 would go into 7 one time with 1 left over. Now if you're someone that still needs to take this 7 over 6 and needs to go through and do this part, remember just like we did at the beginning of this section, that's perfectly fine. It would go in there once with 1 left over. So if you're someone who appreciates using this form and using that check mark method, 1 and 1 sixth is going to come up. Now some people do a lot better with these because it's a smaller number, 7 over 6, easier to deal with, but that's something to kind of consider. Okay, next one. Now these multiplication problems are a little bit different. Um, first of all, these are all fractions, so no problem. Now I tend to like to write them like this, just because I think it's easier to look at and it's easier to reduce from my point of view. But if I'm looking at this, I want to look diagonally to see if there's anything I can reduce. Now if I look 1 and 4, nothing in common. 2 and 3, nothing in common. So really I want to look at anything that is on the top and anything that is on the bottom that could pair up. So these 2's I could reduce. I could reduce this 4 and 2, as long as 1 is on the top and 1 is on the bottom. So let's just do the 4 and 2 because it happens to be right next to each other. So 2 would go into both of those. 2 would go into itself once and into here twice. 1 times 3 is 3, times 1 is 3. 2 times 2 is 4, times 5 would be 20. Now this one is nice because that one's a prime number, one of those big 8 we talked about before. So 3 doesn't go evenly into 20, and it's in perfect, proper fraction form, so that's all we need. Okay, now dividing, dividing um, first of all, if I can go through this and actually solve it, and change it into a multiplication problem, I already know how to solve those and do those. So that's that might be a, something to kind of consider. So let me show you how this works. First of all, if I see a problem just like with multiplication, division is the same thing, they have to be complete fractions. So the first one, the bottom number is going to be 7, and the second one, the bottom number is going to be 42. So multiply and add, multiply and add. So 7 times 2 is 14, plus 1 is 15. So 15 over 7. Then 42 times 1 is 42, plus 25 is 67. Now, this is the way that it works. I'm going to kind of tell you a rhyme that, that my students have used before that's worked. When you divide, you don't ask why. You simply flip the second guy. So if I was looking at these two, the second guy would be the one that comes after the division. And I simply flip it. So 42 would be over 67. When I flip this, I also flip the sign. So instead of having division, it would become multiplication. And the first fraction stays the same. So just for a minute, I want to talk about this, my little rhyme here. When you divide, you don't ask why. You simply flip the second guy. That refers to the, s the second fraction 
is the one you flip. So it's the one that is um, after the division sign. And you also uh, need to change division to multiplication. Now the good thing about that is that when I look to go and solve these later on, it's nice because I already know how to multiply. So that's not kind of a, a new job for me. That's something that I already know how to do. So in this problem, oops, as I flip around here, in this problem once I get here, I can simply go through and start to reduce. Now 15 and 67 I can't do anything with. But the nice thing is the 7 and 42 I can do something with. 7 goes into both of those. 7 goes into itself once and into here six times. So if I go to multiply across now, 15 times 6 is 90 and 1 times 67 is 67. So those of you who still prefer kind of this method, oops that 90 doesn't look very good, and the 67 it would go in there once let's see, 23 would be left over. So if I went to solve this and I did that little check mark method like we were saying before, that would be 1 and 23 over 67. Now let me just tell you a secret. First of all, 23 does not go evenly into 67, not any factors in common. I know we talked about the big 8 prime numbers, but if we did the big 9, <laughs> actually 23 would be in there. So that would be kind of a important thing to realize. Um, that would actually be maybe our big nine if we were doing big nine prime frac prime numbers. So, um, but this is as far as we can get. Okay, let's take a look at this one. This one again, we're going to start with division. We have to make them into fractions. So two is going to be the bottom number in the first one. Three is going to be the bottom number in the second one. So two times three is six plus one is seven. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13. Now I'll tell you now, if I look at these, all four of those are part of the big 8 prime numbers. So the good, And none of them match. So the good thing for us is when we flip the second guy in a minute, we are not going to have to worry about reducing at all. That's not going to be something that's going to be important at all. So if I look at this, so flipping the second guy would make this 3 over 13. Remember that changes to multiplication. then this we leave completely alone. It stays 7 over 2. And now all I can do is multiply across. So 7 times 3 is 21. 2 times 13 is 26. And they have no factors in common, so that's my final answer. Okay, let's go on to the next part. Now, they're going to focus a little bit on this part before we get to add and subtract on least common denominator. Now, the good thing about least common denominator is it's the smallest number that all of the bottom numbers will go into. The good thing for us is that we can actually go through and do those little prime factors that we did before to help us find the easiest factor. So if I do this, 33 would break into 3 and 11. Both of those are prime. Twenty-seven would break into, let's see, 3 times 9. That's prime. This is 3 and 3. Oops. Oh, I should fix that. Jeez. These are both prime and then 9 is 3 and 3. Now I want to kind of get you to kind of see this part but for just a second I want you to look at just this number right here. If I look at just that one our focus on this has to be about just those prime numbers. So I would have to do 3 and 11 to get just that one just focusing on just that number. In fact, let me pull the shade up instead of that. It might be easier. 
there's my shade. So to find my least common denominator, I know it has to have a 3 and an 11. It's the only way I can get 33. Now, the next number has to have three threes. I only have one there, which means that in order to keep this going, I would have to add two more. Now, just watch for a minute. My list has to have a 3 and an 11 in it. It does have a 3 and 11. To be able to do this number, it has to have three threes. So one, two, three threes are there. Now, this last number is two threes, and there are two threes in my list. So if I want to go through and find the least common denominator, I can do that by finding the, what this multiplication would be. So when I multiply that out, I'm going to end up with 297. That means that the least common denominator is going to be 297. Okay, that's going to be the big deal for us. Now, the other thing to consider is, if I didn't want to do it that way with these prime factors, I could do 33 times 1 is 33. 27 and 9 don't both go into that. And I would keep going and do 33 times 2, times 3, times 4, times 5, until I find the number that 27 and 9 will both go into. Now, that takes an awful lot of figuring in your head. I think it's easier to do these. Um, but some of the smaller numbers we're going to see later on will probably be okay as far as that goes. Okay, so let's consider this first adding problem. Um, first of all, to add, you have to have the same number in the bottom, and I don't here. I have 7 and I have 3. So I need to change it so that the bottom numbers are the same for both fractions. So if I think of 7 and 3, I want to find the first number that 7 and 3 will both go into, which would be 21. Now 7 and 3 are both prime. If your numbers are both prime, an easy thing to do, actually, is to go through and multiply them together, and that would give you an easy way to be able to get a number. Okay. Now the problem is that if I'm switching from 7 and 3 to 21, I'm actually going to have to do some kind of multiplying to make that happen. So 7 times what is going to give me 21? And that's going to be 3. Whatever I do the bottom, I have to do the top. So 3 times 1 is 3. Now listen, if I were to reduce 3 over 21, I'd end up back at 1 over 7. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, you should be able to double check yourself that way. Okay, now if I go here to get from set to get from 3 to 21, I would multiply by 7. So 7 times 1 is 7. On the top, that's your new top number. Now it's really easy because if the bottom number is 21 here and the bottom number is 21 here, that's going to be my bottom number here. Now, really all I have to do is take these two and add them together and put it here. So 3 and 7 would be 10 when I add them together. And 21 is the bottom number. That's what it stays. Now when I think of 10, I think of 2 and 5. And when I think of 21, I think of 3 and 7. So no factors in common. So this is going to be your final answer. Okay, let's see if we can sneak one more in here. Okay, 18 and 72. First of all, um, 18 happens to go evenly into 72. So that means we can actually use 72 as our common denominator. So to get from 18 to 72, I would multiply by 4. So 5 times 4 would be 20. Now this one, 72 is the same on the bottom as it is here. So that's almost like multiplying by 1 which means the top number here would be 5. So let's see, 72 and 72 would give me 72 in the bottom here. In the top, 20 and 5 is going to be 25. Now when I see 25, I think of 5 times 5. That's not a factor down here. So there's not going to be any way to reduce. So this is going to be our final answer.